And we're live. It's Friday. I'm Eddie Stone. Good afternoon. Nice of you to join me. I've been looking for uh, forward to this opportunity to speak with you this afternoon for, uh, gosh, for about a week or so since we sort of planned this out. I know from uh, sort of thinking through our, our lives and our discussions and some of the feedback we're getting from folks that the subject matters are, you know, they can be very personal, right? And for myself, this idea, um, the concept of uh, hearing someone versus listening to them is one that's really, well, I mentioned it yesterday on a live. I, I, I think it's one of those things that once the dots were connected for me, I, I just feel like there were some doors that opened up and both my uh, personal connections uh, with family and from business standpoint just had a, a tremendous impact. So I'm excited to be able to share some thoughts with you. Hello, Lori. Hello, Maria. Hello, Denise. See some folks that are joining us for our call. I will tell you that if I look like I'm looking various directions here, we've got a second camera going so that we can record this to use in other social medias that don't work with the square format. So we're going to we're going to try to have a good time with this and and make sure we get as much mileage out of our, our time together as we possibly can. As I think about this concept and for some of you listening, you might go, well, uh, you know, maybe he's just a little over the top on this, but I, I'm, I'm convinced that on an individual level, when you, you think about this idea that people have where, you know, you want to make, um, I think it, uh, Steve Jobs said you want to make a dent in the world. And we talk about the concept of kind of an individual person really have an impact on the world. And there's certainly lots of ways that we can identify that individually we can have an impact on our community and the world around us. But I would argue from an individual standpoint, there's probably few things that you can do to serve people around you more than really honing in on what this means and developing a philosophy surrounding this idea of uh, listening to someone as opposed to just hearing them. And notice that I said philosophy, because I, I do think this is philosophy. There's sort of an ad, ad, uh, attitude that you have to have and a philosophy you have to have. And of course, there are skills but it's more about sort of the attitude and the philosophy that you bring to this more than anything else. Um, and so let me give you what my basic definitions are. And, and if you've got some comments, um, your own ideas about the definition of this, please feel free to put them in the comments because I'm gonna give you at the end of this a charge to go back, think about this over the weekend and maybe come back and comment on this video later next week and give me some of your thoughts after kind of sort of giving consideration. But for me, hearing someone is basically acknowledgement. Right? You're, you're acknowledging them um, probably more physically than anything else. Of course, if you do it over the phone or uh, through a Zoom call or something like that, uh, people really can't see that you're acknowledging. There's sort of an assumption they have to have. Whereas with listening, you're giving someone uh, your attention, your, your focus. And that has a whole sort of different vibe to it, right? We all know, um, not just intuitively, but physically, when someone's really paying attention to us, we can really feel that, right? And it gives us a sensation that when they're just sort of hearing us, we don't really get that same feeling. Um, the subject is important enough, and this is really where my first introduction was, 20 plus years ago, someone told me to read Stephen Covey's book, uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. So this was really my first introduction. And, and, and Stephen Covey, for those that don't know, he spent really a, a large amount of his professional adult life really studying success and thinking about uh, what really made people sort of reach the top of their profession, uh, whether that's sports or business or had good, healthy family lives or you know sort of whatever it happens to be. In his study, he developed a, an idea that there's sort of seven basic habits that if you master them, will lead to success. Well, number five was seven, ha seven habits of highly effective people was listen first, you know, you seek to understand someone, you know, before you reply. And what I have found during the course of my career, and even in my own uh, sort of habits before I got to introduce this material, you know, I'm sort of sort of chomping at the bit to respond to someone. I think we all can do that. And even for me, I really have to watch myself and, and watch my practice of these skills. So it's a subject matter that's written about quite a bit. You can find a lot of material on it. And in fact, I'm going to encourage you to do some studying about the subject matter. But let me give you sort of some observations that I've made and some commentary on the role of success that I think it either leads to or the way it gets in the way of success. So first, 
the first kind of person, we'll call them sort of a, a, a character or a meme that I've identified is the pretender. And that's someone that's sort of looking at you and every now and then they'll go, uh-huh, right, uh-huh. But if you were to slip in some kind of detailed question or something they needed to you know, comment on, they wouldn't be able to because they're not really listening to you. They're sort of tuned out. And then there's the number two person, which is what I call selective listening, which is where they sort of come in and out, but they're basically distracted. And we've all seen this, right? They've got their, their phone in their hand and they're looking at their phone, but they're trying to look at you. And you can even tell when someone's talking to you on the phone or maybe through like a Skype call or something, and they're simultaneously doing email because they're missing sort of key components of the conversation. So they're selectively listening to uh, the conversation and really you can tell, right? I've even found myself that I'll stop a conversation because I don't want to repeat myself and I value my own time enough that I don't want to continue down that path. And look, I'm telling you this because I'm guilty of it too. You know, sometimes I can get in that sort of situation myself. And then there's number three, that's the interrupter. And that interrupter is one of the more irritating persons that at least I have to deal with. And I guess for yourself, you'll have to decide which of these things sort of bothers you more. But what I really uh, get disturbed by is you're in the middle of a, a dialogue with someone, you're, you're trying to really pay attention to what they're saying. You could be discussing something quite serious. You've got a thought you want to consider. And if you pause for even a moment, that interrupter jumps into the conversation, can throw you off track and truthfully, without having to herd you out completely. They don't really know what you were gonna say. They may say, oh, I, I know what you're gonna say. They wanna finish your sentence or something like that, but that's really bad form, right? If that's something you find yourself doing, you might consider what that's doing to the other parties, whether this is at home with your spouse, your kids, or even in the workplace. There's not a whole lot of room in my world for this interrupter uh, type person. And then there's number four, and this is maybe the one that I'll, I'll spend the most time on because it's the one I really want to caution people about because I think you can fall into this trap not really meaning to, but it can be really destructive both personally and professionally, and that's the ego listener. That's the person that's, well, essentially they're a, a bit of a braggart, they're arrogant, they're sort of self-centered or self-important, they sort of need to have the last word. Um, I frankly think that they're compensating for sort of low self-esteem and, and not really willing to give up to you and make themselves vulnerable to understanding and listening to you because of sort of their own set of issues. I think it kind of speaks to sort of a, a boorish, unhappy behavior. And a kind of a way I define it is they're one-upsmen. They hear what you're saying, right? You just took a trip somewhere. You're coming back in a casual conversation. Oh my gosh, we just had a good weekend. We did X, Y, and Z. And before you can even sort of list it out and sort of celebrate with it, it's not, not bragging. You're just having a conversation. You're sharing. All of a sudden they're like, oh, well, this is what I did. And the volume goes up and the attitude and the altitude goes up in what they're trying to say. And that's the type of person that it repeats constantly. The people in my life that sort of fit into this category, it happens really every single phone call under almost every kind of circumstance, whether it's that you took a trip and they just took one more fabulous or you had a flat tire and they didn't just have a flat tire, all their tires went flat and their transmission fell out of the car, right? Does it does it sort of matter what it is? They've got to position themselves sort of ahead of, you know, whatever it is that's going on for you or going on in your world. And what I think the challenge is, at least for me and in my own readings and observation is that you as the person interacting with that person, you shut down. And there's a cascade of effect on this in terms of the relationship. One, I find I don't enjoy those conversations. And so I won't volunteer to be around that individual person or, or persons of that kind, let's call it, because I'm not trying to identify any single person in my life. I'm just sort of making this observation, whether these are people that I've met professionally or people on a personal level. And so you kind of shut down. You don't necessarily want to be around them. And what I then find is whatever they have to say, I don't care so much about. And I really value trying to be curious and pay attention and focus on someone. But in this relationship, whether it's a, a conversation or even an email exchange or whatever it happens to be, 
the interactiveness is important for continuing the engagement and the developing of an idea or the developing of a relationship. There has to be a reciprocal relationship where there's a give and take. And if it doesn't exist, if it's all one sided, if one person, no matter what you do or say, ups the volume, if you find yourself in that own situation, you need to ask yourself, why am I doing that? You know, why do I feel the need to have one story better? or have the final word. You know, what, what's going on? Is there, is there something in my dynamic that I need to revisit? Because that is not the type of behavior or the type of activity that's going to develop a relationship over the long haul. And ultimately, I believe it leads to dissatisfaction and even unhappiness relative to either individual relationships or relationships as a whole. In fact, I have found that for individuals that struggle with this sort of ego listening issue, they're generally unhappy. Uh, the relationships that they have are, are not as healthy as they should be. And in fact, they're generally not prolonged. Some of my friends that have struggled to maintain a romantic relationships, I can just sort of hear sort of that dialogue that they're having where they feel compelled to brag or overstep or overreach when in fact, the truth is good enough and it's okay to celebrate one person's success as opposed to also celebrating yours. What I've discovered is if you have a relationship, you'll have plenty of chances to come back and share with someone your own good fortune or your own travel or whatever happened with you because once a person's heard, they really want to tune in and listen to you. Uh, Dale Carnegie was also an individual person he, he published how to win friends and influence people. And he talked about the same type of dynamic. You know, when you go into a room, if you're the person that listens to other people, oftentimes when you leave, even though you haven't said very much, you'll be the person they speak most highly about and most wonderfully about, even though you didn't really say anything, but people are so starved to be listened to and to understood. They, they really will develop an affection for that person that has the mastery of that skill. So in large ways or many ways, this is about respecting someone and when to sort of own that relationship and, and sort of be a part of it with them in a, in a mutual fashion. Now, let me give you a caution. I'm not trying to say that you have to listen in on every conversation that occurs because clearly that doesn't work. We all have limitations. But what I am, am saying is that if you decide you have the bandwidth for a conversation, if you decide to sit down with someone or start a conversation, then I think you have a responsibility to finish that. And if you think you don't have it, right, you're going to be distracted. I would rather say to my, to my wife Maria or the kids or someone at work, say, hey, listen, I don't have the bandwidth right now or I'm a little addled about some other issue from earlier in the day. Can we put this off till later? Can we put it off till tomorrow? Because I want to give someone my undivided attention. You know, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna do it, if I'm gonna be there with them, I really want to be there with them because I want to give them that love and respect because that's the kind of thing that helps things move forward. So, where do we go? Oftentimes, what you hear is about active listening or attentive listening. You can kind of call it whatever you want to. You know, for me, I think about it as sort of paying attention to people. And to do that, I don't know that there's a set of skills you have to have. I mean, there's certainly some skills you can develop in this regard. But mostly it's about being curious about other people, being open-minded, frankly, liking people. You know, you've met people, I've met people, they don't really like people. And it's not hard to figure that out, right? They sort of walk into the room with a cloud and when they leave the room, the cloud leaves with them, right? So we've all met those people. So one of the things I, I would ask you to consider, because this is a skill that developed can help propel you, propel your business, Make no mistake, our business is a relationship business. It's driven by relationships and listening is a key component in developing those relationships. So if you wanna be successful, either just on a, on a limited scale because that matches up with your goals or you wanna do something on a grand scale, developing these listening skills are one of those key things. In fact, there's probably about a half dozen things I would tell people that you, know, you hear it described as maybe soft skills that can make a big difference. This is one of them. No question in my mind after sort of 30 years that developing this uh, active, attentive listening is a big deal, both personally and professionally. So curious, open-minded, um, empathetic towards your fellow human beings. And maybe this is the most important one, which is to have humility. Because to, to be vulnerable, 
meaning quiet, listening, paying attention to another person, you've got to be, uh, you've got to have some humility to recognize that in this moment, it's not about you, it's about someone else. And what I promise is, you'll get your turn, right? Don't, don't worry about that, don't get caught up, well, I won't get to say what I wanna say. You don't have to say it right then and there. There's always tomorrow. They won't forget the conversation, particularly if you paid attention to them. So if you wanna make an impression and you wanna have a chance to share with somebody something you're enthusiastic about, start by listening to them. This is one of the most critical things I can sort of encourage people, particularly if you're brand new. So you're in a conversation with someone, take your phone and turn it upside down. Close the laptop, close out of your emailer if you're talking to someone on a Zoom call. Don't let them hear you typing and don't try to type quietly, right? That's not the point. The point is if you accepted the call and you booked the time, then own that time and be in that moment because if there's a set of skills, that's one of them. So I've got a little bit of a list that I'll, I'll sort of throw at you. One, it's a practice. As much as anything else, this is a practice to go with the philosophy and the attitude. Um, so you, 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 you kind of start there. Um, I do believe if you do this, you're going to find that people around you pay more attention to you. You're going to find there's a loyalty that goes with it. Uh, you're even going to find that you have fans, even though you may not have intended for this to develop fans of you, but you'll find that when you walk into a room, people will sort of celebrate your entrance. Oh, hey, and you can kind of see the enthusiasm. Oh, come on over here and, and join this conversation. I want you to meet my friend. People are eager to introduce you to other people if you think you are a good listener. If you're the other side of this, if you're one of those egos or interrupters or selective listeners, when you walk into a room, they're not waving you over to introduce you to their closest friends. In our business, we have a, um, a strategy or a tool called three-way phone calls where someone connects you if you're a person with experience with someone that doesn't have experience and questions and, and they want to introduce you so you can share some information or answer some questions. Guess what? If people aren't requesting you to do these calls, it's most likely because you're not a good listener. You're not really listening to the question that's being posed to you. And take it a step further, you're not really matching the energy of the person on the other end of the conversation. So these are things that require sort of this observation in your mind, sort of a paying attention to. For me, none of this happened overnight and I remain a work in progress, I promise you. We could get Maria to join this call and she would remind you that sometimes I'm just too distracted. And what I appreciate is when people around me will say, Eddie, where are you at right now? Where's your head at, right? We're supposed to be doing this, focused on that. And I appreciate being called back in because life can be distracting, but this is a skill set that I encourage you to think about and look to develop over time. So here's my charge as we wrap this up. First, um, these are my points of view. I'd like you to develop your own points of view and think about how important you think this is. Maybe think about if there's about a half dozen things that are part of this soft skill set that can make a big impact in life and business, what are those to you? For me, listening instead of just hearing, focusing someone instead of just being in the room with them is one of those critical components. So this weekend, here's a little homework. Think about this. You know, what does this mean to you? Do some reading. If you go out there and Google listening skills, you're gonna find several articles that pop up uh, there's a lot of articles that pop up. There's some commonality to it. So think about it. Do some studying. Come back to me next week. Find this live again. It will be on the website. And give me some follow-up comments about where you're at and what you think. Because I believe, particularly going into the holidays, right, you're going to be around a lot of family, people you haven't seen in a while. Guess what? They've got a lot to say. So do you. Let them have the first turn. Let them own those initial conversations, right? We're, we're with family during Thanksgiving particularly, right? Most of the time for quite a few hours. So you'll have a chance to reconnect with your aunt or uncle or whomever it happens to be multiple times. Give them the first shot. Look at somebody's face when they're heard by you. It brings a joy and a happiness to them. And what I find is when I'm looking at someone and I can see joy and happiness on their face, it makes me feel fulfilled in the very same way. So with that, some things to think about. I appreciate your time and attention. Hope you'll take this information, own it yourself, develop your own philosophy around it. And I look forward to speaking to you uh, later sometime next week. Bye for now.